Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share a quick unboxing and first look at an NVIDIA RTX 5090. Now, I had promised myself I wasn't going to do it, but because I built this new workstation and I finally saw some availability, you know, things just lined up and I'm giving it a shot. So, my beloved 4090 isn't going anywhere. I don't have plans of selling this, at least in the immediate. It is an amazing GPU. Arguably the best 90 series card NVIDIA ever made. I think it was even better than the one I'm about to unbox. Yes, the 5090 is faster, but when you think about generational uh, performance and the leap that the 4090 brought to the table and the fact that this card has a lot of legs and is going to be relevant for a long time, at least another generation, I would say four more years minimum. I mean, some of you are going to be able to take this down the gaming and uh, work line a lot longer than that. So that's why I'm really tempted to hold on to this card, despite its high resale value right now. It's also in perfect condition, a little dusty. I got to clean it up. Uh, but this was the MSI Slim, and it was excellent because at the time, there was no slimmer card in the 90 series, in the well, 4000 series uh, gen, and also the I.O. I mean, one of the things I had wanted badly was an additional HDMI 2.1 port. This card delivered that. Uh, for some of you, that doesn't matter. In comes this guy. So, um, you know, the Asus cards obviously are commanding the highest dollar. This retails for a little over three grand. I'll include a link in the description if you can ever, you know, catch it in stock. I know Micro Centers had a lot of these in stock. People just, not this particular model, but I mean 5090s. If you look right now across the country, they've got them laying around. And there's a reason. Uh, this card has broken every record, and I'm not talking about performance. Yes, it is still the fastest GPU on the market, and it will be uh, until the 6090. But to be over $3,000 is absolutely insane. And so, you know, while the performance is top notch, I am not expecting more than 15 to possibly a 30% lift from the 4090. Now, of course, 32 gigs of RAM versus 24 of VRAM, that's a big difference. But we come back to the same issue, which is that what will you actually be using that extra RAM for? And when you start to think about practical application and where you will actually possibly even see a difference, um, I'm not sure that you're going to see much. And the reason is, I mean, the driver situation has been awful. I mean, really, really bad. Um, and this is one of those things where I had bad feelings about this entire launch, even though every generation I jump on board. I mean, I have been an NVIDIA fan since the 90s. Uh, they were the company I thought would rise above everyone. Uh, ATI, 3DFX, and of course, well, we know how that worked out. They have rewritten the game, and now they are the, the backbone of AI. Unfortunately, what that meant for this generation was that the AI focus kind of meant that gamers were going to, unfortunately, get the shaft. And between that and Trump's tariffs, it essentially created a perfect storm. Now, any of you that already... Uh, stay current with NVIDIA GPUs, you already know how expensive they are. You already know they're always instantly sold out. You already know that if you ever plan to sell your card um, ahead of time, you kind of are making a foolish mistake if you haven't learned by now, because if you don't have a replacement in hand, you're just going to be one of those people who ends up getting uh, pushed into a scalped market where you're going, maybe scalp's not the right word anymore, doesn't make a hell of a lot of sense, but you're going to be paying people that have purchased the cards simply to resell them. And the, the truth of the matter there is that if you want to get the best bang for your buck, do yourself a favor, hold on to your GPU. I've been saying this for years now. I always do. Sell it after. I know everyone would rather have the money in pocket to buy the new one, but if you can't get one of these, which is what happened to many people, when only 300 of them were available on launch day, you inherently are then left with no GPU. So, I mean, if you're going to keep a backup and you've got something that will hold you over, fine, so be it. But if you don't, don't uh, make it so that you have no GPU. A little bit of paperwork. It's actually fairly thick. We have what appears to be a little uh, stabilizer to, you know, make sure it doesn't have any sag. 
and then the power cable. So we've got everything here. This is a, a, a big boy, no question about it. Um, let's take a look at the card itself. I'm gonna get the box out of the way. And I'm excited about this because it is obviously, you know, one of those things where for the foreseeable future, this is the epitome of computing for me. And not just gaming, we're talking about everything that I do as a content creator, video editing, uh, literally every time I use my PC, I mean, this isn't always at work, but a lot of the times it is. And that's where, um, you know, I again, I started this video by saying I promised myself I wasn't going to do this because I knew that as soon as I saw that we were starting at two grand for the Founders Edition, which, by the way, I would have preferred the Founders Edition. Um, I don't need an overclocked card. I firmly believe that there's more than enough performance in the Founders Edition for me. But in the absence of a Founders Edition option, um, I am an MSI fan, and this card is well-reviewed. Solid performer. I'm not concerned about it. And let me tell you, this thing is massive. I'm going to bring in the 4090 here so you can see it. I think it weighs about six pounds, somewhere thereabout. MSI branding on the front. Uh, and then, of course, GeForce RTX. Then on the other side, we've got the MSI Dragon. Uh, it's a little holographic. Well, maybe not holographic. Um, and that appears to be pretty much it. Um, the we still have that bio switch so you can go between silent and gaming. I've never seen a huge difference between the two modes, but they are threshold based. So it's going to be a matter of what you actually do with it. Um, and then when it comes to IO, now I was just mentioning before how one of the things I loved about my 4090 to the right, uh, because it was the slim, it had two HDMI 2.1 ports. Here, we only have one. That still works for me. Uh, my center monitor is an LG Flex, 42 inch. If you're not familiar with it, it's still for sale, even though it launched uh, several years back. I actually bought it this past year for a thousand bucks at Best Buy, an absolute steal. Love that thing. Best of both worlds. Still top of the line. Yes, it doesn't do 240. I don't care. 120 is still working for me just fine. Uh, DisplayPort 2.1 now. I've got three of these. Now, this is a big deal for me because um, I have the Samsung 57-inch ultra-wide, which I've never been able to use natively. This GPU is going to make that happen. So that'll be interesting to test out as well. This is part of what I'll be reporting on. And then uh, last but certainly not least, I've also got two side displays, uh, the LG 16 uh, by 10, those square uh, up monitors. Those are my side monitors for the Flex. So this is going to be able to easily support all three of those displays. And then, you know, I'm not going to have any problem driving that Samsung 57-inch ultra-wide. But then the other thing that is really appealing to me here is uh, that we have 10-bit support natively. I'm expecting better overall performance inside uh, all productivity uh, and rendering and video editing, photo editing, uh, but especially video because of that 10-bit native support. We'll see what kind of impact that has. Uh, and beyond uh, all of that, the real concern I have is just with drivers because NVIDIA has been screwing those up since this launch. It's been a sloppy, messy quarter for them. Uh, and while they're at the top of really the global uh, market at this point, not just inside of tech, but really they are the company to own shares in as far as I'm concerned, uh, and I've thought that since, you know, again, the late 90s, anyone who went to school with me, they know. Uh, but this is just unfortunately indicative of what's going wrong. Now, I also have a 5070 in the studio. I've had that uh, for a while. Haven't gotten to thoroughly testing it, but now that the 5090 is in the house, I think we will finally get a look at that. Man, this thing is just so massive. In comes the 4090, so you can just get a side-by-side -side because, yes, I do have the slim 4090, but this thing literally makes the Slim 4090 look like a baby GPU. So uh, luckily, I have the MSI Maestro uh, 700PZ, so I'm not going to have an issue, issue fitting this in the case. But unfortunately, their vertical mount doesn't, didn't even work with my 4090, and I'm not interested in customizing and trying to figure this out. I'm going to go ahead and just turn these around, see if that, that's going to be a better angle for you to really get a side-by-side -side comparison of these two. It's just a massive card. Um, so more power, more VRAM, 
And then when it comes to performance, that's where, you know, things get iffy. Uh, because this card, just because of drivers, the 4090 in general, is still outperforming the 5090 in lower resolution. Of course, in 4K, the 5090 takes the lead, as I mentioned, anywhere from 15 all the way up to even possibly 40% in some titles. And then if you have, if you're using uh, DLSS, any of that stuff, well, of course, you don't have the same capability with the 4090. You lose some fine detail in order to gain a lot of frames. I'm not in love with that proposition, but those of you who are okay with it, that's one of the big benefits of that extra, the AI performance, if you will, that comes out of the 5090 as opposed to the 4090. But very similar uh, overall shroud design, that's to be expected. They're from the same manufacturer and really a similar lineup of cards. Even though this is the slim, you can see it follows all the same design language as this guy right here. So I'm going to get this into my build. Again, this will be running with uh, an AMD 9950X3D uh, that's seated on an AM5 MSI godlike board. I've got 64 gigs of Corsair uh, titanium Dominator uh, DDR5 RAM at 6,000 mega transfers, ideal for that 9950X3D. Yes, I could have gone with something with even tighter timings than CL30. I know there's CL26 out there, but I've had enough uh, issues with putting everything together for something I thought would be totally seamless. And when I say issues, it hasn't been bad, but I am not really interested in overclocking. This should deliver more than enough performance just as my 4090 has. But we're going to see how much of a difference. For example, my most frequently played title right now is Helldivers 2. If you bump into me there, Eddie Murphy's son, um, then you will know it's me. Uh, I average about 100 to 110 frames and that's at native uh, quality, 4K, uh, 120 hertz, and it's a gorgeous experience. Now, no DLSS. Uh, with the 5090, I'm expecting that to get more to about 130, 140. Now, is that worth it for playing Helda? Absolutely not. I mean, remember, this card is over $3,000, 3050 to be exact, pre-tax. After the damage is done, depending on where you live, it is the price of what used to be a high-end PC. Uh, so... It's really a matter of what you're looking for. I do not recommend picking up a 5080. To me, it's either the 5070 or the 5090. Uh, and it's just because the, the price proposition on this generation is awful. And if you're going to blow the load, so to speak, it should be on the card that will be the top of the market for the foreseeable future. Anything else I feel like is kind of throwing money into the toilet. This card outperforms the 5080. Uh, and I paid, you know, a similar price to what the 5080 is selling for, uh, not at launch, because I did wait a little bit, I was happy with my 3090 Ti, uh, but if you're sitting on a 3090, the 5070 has got to be attractive. Yes, less VRAM, uh, so depending on what you're doing, but if we're just talking about gaming, that's part of the testing I'll be doing, and I'll be letting all of you know how it performs, because I'm probably going to throw that into uh, my wife's uh, workstation gaming PC and see how that fares compared to the 3090. 3090 Ti is going to be a little closer, but again, excited to try this out. I will keep all of you posted. There will be a comparison of these two GPUs. And ultimately, I will have, of course, my full review and the decision as to whether or not I'm going to keep this or send it back to MSI. And that's the other important thing. When I saw it in stock, I actually got this through Walmart. It was a strange name, the, uh, the seller. Of course, I Googled that to see if they were legit, saw they were a subdivision of MSI, knew I was golden, and here we are with the gaming trio. But that rounds things out. Very excited to get this in the case. Uh, connect the new um, streamer wireless that I recently got and see how this puppy runs. Any questions or comments, please feel free to post them at that like button. And as usual, please feel free to subscribe and please stay safe. Later.